the quotient integration says we have to be able to integrate a function of the form of the square root of a squared minus x squared. Uh, it also says we need to be able to use definite integrals with applications to areas. In this example, it involves both of these skills. Derive the area of a disk is pi r squared. Well, we'll draw a disk and we'll label the axis x and y. And then we look at what is the formula for getting the integral of an area. And we see that the area going down to the x-axis is the integral between b and a of y dx. Now, let's consider just a quarter of this circle, a quarter of this disk. So we're going from 0 out to r, we call that the radius of the disk, that's the yellow shaded area. So it's a quarter of the full area we're getting. So the area over 4 would be between r and 0 of y dx. And we'll have to ask ourselves, well, what is y in this case? Well, this is a circle with center at 0, 0. And the formula for a circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So we see that y squared would be equal to r squared minus x squared, taking x squared from both sides. And y then is the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now this is of the type we mentioned at the start. So we rewrite our integral replacing y with the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now there's a little trick involved in how do we integrate this. And the trick is that we replace x with r sine theta. Now let's explain this. We'll draw a little triangle here, we'll call the angle theta, we'll call the hypotenuse r, the opposite side x. And using Pythagoras' theorem, the adjacent side would then would be r squared minus x squared, which is the same expression that we're using here. Now, sine theta in this case would be opposite over hypotenuse, or x over r. So if we divide both sides, multiply both sides by r, we see that x is equal to r sine theta. And this is a little trick that we use. So instead of x, we want to use r sine theta. And in the same way, the adjacent side, r squared minus x squared, is equal to r cos theta. Now, since we're doing a substitution here, let's differentiate x. So if x is r sine theta, dx d theta is r cos theta. So if we multiply both sides by d theta, we see dx is equal to r cos theta d theta. Now we're nearly ready to make a substitution, but we have these limits r and 0. So if x is r sine theta, what is theta? So maneuvering this around, we see that theta is the sine inverse of x divided by r. Now it doesn't look the prettiest, but we see it's not too bad when we substitute in r and 0 into this. So get the first limit, we'll call it theta 1. We'll substitute in r instead of x. So it's sine inverse r over r. Well, r over r is 1. And sine inverse of 1 is 90 degrees, or we'll call it pi over 2 in radians. And substituting in 0 for x, we're getting sine inverse of 0. And the sine inverse of 0 is 0, of course. The calculator will give you these two results. So now we're ready to rewrite our expression. Now you, you could learn off this uh, way of rewriting it, but it's important to understand where it comes from. So a is equal to 4 times the integral. Instead of r and theta, we have pi over 2 and 0. Instead of the square root of r squared minus x squared, we see that that's the same as r cos theta. And also dx, we see, is equal to r cos theta d theta. Uh, 
Uh, so we can neaten this up. We see we have r cos theta squared here. So we have r squared cos squared theta d theta. The r squared part is a constant, so I can move that outside the integral. So I have 4r squared pi over 2 and 0 of cos squared theta d theta. Now we've integrated cos squared theta d theta before. It's actually given in the log tables, um, the result of it, if you want. But the substitution we can make is the cos squared theta d theta is the same as a half the integral of 1 plus cos 2 uh, theta d theta. So we're making this substitution. There is another way in the log tables. It gives you a, a formula for cos squared theta d theta as well. But using this method we've used before, we've just rewritten it. And now we're finally ready to actually perform the integration. I see half 4 is 2, so I have 2r squared. Now, if we integrate 1 with respect to theta, we get theta. And the integral of cos 2 theta is sine 2 theta divided by 2. And that's going to put in the limits pi over 2 and 0. We're almost there at this stage. So this is equal to 2r squared. So we're going to put in pi over 2 instead of theta plus sine 2 times pi over 2. Now 2 pi over 2 is going to be just sine pi and this divided by 2 and, and the sine of pi is 0. That's a nice result and then we subtract when we sub in um, 0 as our limit so that's 0 minus sine 2 0 over 2. Now also the sine of 0 is also 0. So So it's only pi over 2 that's left here, but 2, two multiplied by pi over 2 is just pi, so we have pi r squared, which is what we wanted. So it all works out neat. This is an important one to learn, maybe.